Hello everyone and welcome to my talk about supercharging your platform engineering with AI and trying to move from what we are doing today with automation to something a bit more intelligent or at least that think about solving issue not just following some rule that you already set up. We have 15 minutes so let's go quickly. I'm Jean Burlier, I'm working today as a principal engineer. I'm also leading the platform team at Sanofi for the last three years. I'm working a lot on open source projects, mainly around the JavaScript ecosystem with Node.js, especially with Express, where I'm a member of the technical committee. I'm also a member of the Winter CG. And you can find me on multiple social networks from Blue Sky, GitHub, LinkedIn, and pretty much everything online with a Shiplu uh, nickname. But let's move on. Really, our first topic and a big discussion is today's software has been moving faster and faster for the last at least decade, but maybe even more. And most of the platform team, if your company already is built around the platform team, are really under pressure. And they try to deliver speed, safety, scale. The main idea for the platform team is to give you a solution for every engineer, every people working around code and software, capability that they don't have to rebuild every time. But today, and since mostly, let's say, two years, it really started two years ago, AI is just not hype. It's not just a default new chat GPT stuff. It's not neural network that can be every hard. It's really something that becomes more and more critical tool for every platform engineer, and that should be a capability that is provided by the platform team for everyone. And we can think that depending on your company, your situation, or just the size or mindset of your platform team, there is multiple ways that AI can really be involved uh, part of your process, part of your delivery as a platform team, or some AI-related tool that you can expect coming from your platform team. Um, I think, uh, quickly, today, most of the platform team, or even DevOps team, they follow this rule. You have automation. The automation is built around rule, around script, pipeline. So basically, if something happens, if there is an error, then you do something. If something else happened, you have a specific HTTP code, you have a specific build error or any kind of pipeline, then you do something. It's like directly something happening, I will do something. It's not really intelligent. With AI, you can move a lot more with trying to have a system that observes, that will try to learn new pattern maybe and try to deduct what it should be acting. For example, something that we have been seeing but is not really managed directly by the team, but a capability that is offered by a lot of companies is a firewall. Back in the day, firewall were like, oh, if I have more than X request, I will block this IP address. It's a if X, do Y. Today, we also try to analyze a lot more pattern if this is the same IP requesting or doing too much request, of course, it will be blocked, but it will also depend on system. If the IP is an IP provided, let's say, by another cloud provider, maybe there will be some more leniency. If, um, on the opposite, if you have sp the same payload that is coming from multiple IP, maybe it will be matched and detected as a pattern, or some specific rule like that. It's a bit less, or trying to move to something a bit more intelligent. And especially today, we are moving in a faster way, but also we try to bring intelligence and to have something that is built a bit smarter, not just relying on default role, but trying to learn, trying to adapt, trying to evolve. So, but before we go to that, let's really go quickly about the current state of automation for most of the company and platform team. So today, platform team work a lot with CI CD pipeline, everything in uh, infrastructure as code, self service environment, maybe providing feature where uh, bootstrap or people can click on a button on a workflow and it creates something. Maybe also they provide top level monitoring and alerting for teams. And most of the time, you will see platform team trying to advance and to work around governance or governing workflow or some specific part of governance about code quality or process expectation. And that's really good, like today automation, if you have something that is 90 plus percent automated, you can, most of the time if it's done correctly, you have consistency, you have speed, you have scale. Like deploying 20 applications or 200 applications is almost the same. Deploying one time a day to 20 time a day is the same. It doesn't require additional work from a specific engineer, both on the product team or on the platform team. And I think that's really great. But you do have some limitation, really, when you work with that. First, if you implement static logic or specific condition that cannot adapt to new way of working, to new kind of error, to change on a cloud provider, then someone will need to work on that. If there is too much alert, especially for example around security or around specific pipeline that may be failing, people will just 
basically stop answering on call or not handle alert. Like people will be like, oh, it's 200 call on a day. I think it's the same as the last 50. I don't care about that. But maybe it's something critical that needs to happen. Um, you also have your system that don't learn uh, from history. One use case I lived a couple of years ago is during Black Friday or to be honest, any kind of event that drive a lot more sales. Maybe your system are not tailored or handled to just detect that you will get you will be getting more requests on that day because a lot more people will be buying. So everyone will be on call, your system may be working fine, but it will be above threshold on monitoring, on alerting, and just you didn't think about that. Okay, it's one day during the year, but I'm fairly certain, at least for myself, I don't want to be called on the 25th of December. That's definitely an issue. Um, and the last one is if you really want to optimize your scaling, your capability on the cloud. If you try to do everything by hand, from scaling, tuning, specific resources, compute, CPU, memory, stuff like that, if you don't have something intelligent, you may be having something that may be working, but it won't be optimized, at least most of the time. So we need to try something that will be smarter and with a better way that just be, that will rely on automation and be built on top of automation, but can take some decision that will be a bit more uh, intelligent or at least thinking and coming from data set. So that's really the idea with AI. How can we move from something that we are reacting to an alert, to an event, to something, to try to be proactive? So the first part is the AI part. Like I said, pattern recognition, when you move across time, across system, that's something that is fairly easy not to build, but to see uh, how it can bring some good information. The same way, trying to predict pattern, trying to see that, oh, next week it's Black Friday or it's Christmas or it's uh, January 1st, so the traffic won't be the same. It may be higher, it may be way lower, or stuff like that. So trying to detect that without engineer and human having to think, oh, next week the load will be, will be different from a normal week. Um, there is also some way where you can try to discuss or to have some kind of natural language between someone or helping to, to provide more information. And especially the last point is really trying to have some kind of learning that continuously improve, both on the capability you are deploying, but also on the pattern of usage that you may have on your API, on your front end, on your security alert, on your way to deploy, this kind of stuff. So it's try to add with AI some kind of automation that will be seated on top of automation. We are not speaking about removing automation, just trying to add a new layer that brings more capability while based on the previous one. And some company already provide that kind of setup, and they call that smart, over, or smart observability, sorry, or AI ops. You may have heard of that. So it's really trying to detect anomalies in real time, direct, bring you direct correlated logs, metric trust on your system, uh, maybe trying to give you, hey, this error already happened three weeks ago, this is a post-mortem, the resolution was that operation, you should check that because it may be the same. But it's also helping you to reduce alert noise because if it's something that already happened and was flagged as just a temporary issue or an issue on a specific system, maybe you won't need to have five teams that are building system or relaying system on system that may be broken to be paged or called uh, during a weekend just to try to fix something that is not broken on their side, but only on one specific team. And I think one of the stuff is it's really hard for a lot of people and a lot of companies just to build good incident report uh, when there is any kind of issue. By having AI or using AI to try to track every operation, creating war room, creating document, reviewing document, adding maybe some more information, that's really something that helps a lot. It's 2 a.m. on a Saturday, you are stressed, you are on call, people are like trying to find ways the bug, definitely you may not have your mind focused on, hey, how can I write the best document and how can I not forget about one specific uh, important information in that document? AI can solve or help some that. So it's really moving from, you have dashboard, you may be paged from a dashboard or from a specific monitor, but AI is bringing you or helping you refine or giving you some idea of a diagnostic, but it can also help you to generate incident timeline um, and basically doing the paperwork, which definitely we don't want to do when something happens. And for that, even if before that you had capabilities, with Gen AI, with the past two years and a lot more way to discuss, to have an interface based on the natural language, it can bring a lot of new solutions for a platform. For a platform. 
um, and a platform tool capabilities also. You can also generate and help people to generate default documentation, helping people with onboarding, trying if people bring error before pinging someone human, they can ping a message to an AI that maybe give them, give them some insight or someone already discussed about that issue and give you the right link. So really this idea of providing some kind of CLI or chat ops part of the comp your, your company just to solve issue, to share information, debug or be aware of that can be really great. And you don't need something really, really powerful, just a small AI able to learn or understand and have some history information. And that's really the main idea of changing your developer experience from your engineer part of the platform or engineer using your services, moving from, oh, I need to write YAML, I need to read a lot of documentation, to, hey, can I ping the AI to review something I did? Is there any error? Trying to remove a lot of the re human review that are needed to try to have at least a first uh, interface or first exchange with an AI to give insight and help trying to reduce the human time that will be spent. Um, you can also work on trying to have operation deployment that may be checked even before it's run with AI trying to predict if the deployment will be a failure, especially if you are using A-B testing. That way, based on metrics and evolution, it can be maybe detected way faster than, oh, your new version is introducing a new bug that was not detected and people are failing because you see a large increase on error on a specific page that is an existing page and comparing specific value. You can also update and change your rollout strategy when you do A-B testing, just because maybe you will want to add threshold not just on time, but on number of requests, number of operation, type of operation, and ensuring that everything is tested before you release that to other people that will not be part of, that's the first part of the deployment. Um, infrastructure drift, at least to be able to analyze specific configuration that may be used globally. And if you are getting information from your monitoring, how maybe to optimize specific setting on compute, on network, on storage, and stuff other stuff. And that's really an idea of trying to, not just on our side, shipping feature, but how can we ship a feature with more feedback from other engineers that we already have today, but with something that may be able to handle a lot more information, a lot more if use case, or be aware of use case that your team is not even aware, but based on the usage of API or specific setting from another team. And I think that's really important. And the last one, um, I think it's the last one, is really about security and compliance. Security can be quite hard, especially when your team are growing. A lot of people are not security experts, they are not expert in compliance. They may have heard some specific keyword like GDPR, EPA, SOC2, depending on the field where you are working on. But people are not experts. So when you are getting an error from um, your security tooling that gives you, hey, you should be trying to solve that because that's a PII issue, you may be stuck on what PII, how can I solve that, or giving you insights. So one of the parts is you can have validation both on your code, both on your, um, sorry, on your code and on your, uh, let's say, cloud infrastructure, but you can also use AI to generate specific uh, audit trail, uh, and most of the time on my side, that's really important, suggesting remediation. It may not be something that should be handled by the platform team, but that's definitely something that should be worked with the cybersecurity team and maybe with the platform team, especially to try to implement those kind of new insight or new capability part of an internal developer platform. And that's the idea of trying to change that. And really, what can you build today, you? And because most of the topic I discussed today, it can be software that you can be buying from a specific company, maybe a cloud provider, maybe from a security company providing some tool or monitoring company. But really, what can you build today on your side? Using GenAI, like we said, can be really nice to have some kind of interface to discuss about API, pipeline, statue log, based on logs or information you are pulling from different services. It can also be used to explain concepts that could be a bit harder to understand or review some code that might be provided. I put YAML and Terraform in configuration for infrastructure as code because most of the time, today, people that work on projects are way more uh, experienced, let's say, in front-end technology or back-end technology than in the cloud technology or infrastructure as code, so, or even CI, CD. So having that can help a lot. Um, but you can also ask your AI or chatbot, hey, I want to build a front-end application, how should I do that? And if your company built an internal developer um, a design system, sorry, then maybe your AI can suggest, hey, you should be using that design system, you should be relying on that component for the header, for the login, for authentication. So that's really to try to 
have an easy way for engineers to be aware what capability, what service, what documentation are existing already part of your company. Um, and I spoke about documentation, but definitely the main issue I saw on all companies I worked with is documentation. Best case scenario, you have some documentation, maybe some kind of architecture diagram, maybe a C4 diagram if you generate API, but most of the time you may have some documentation about how to start a project and do a pull request, but not really in-depth documentation on use case. You don't have a lot of company doing ADR for a specific project or RFC and keeping track of that. So trying to get documentation and having documentation that stay up to date um, and, is, and where other people are aware can be a great way to work on. So that's really quite important to work on that. So you can also work on summarizing information on Slack, on discussion on Teams, so that's really great. And working and trying to auto-generate readme or improving readme or even building infrastructure diagram for code is something that makes sense uh, to try to help and reduce the time of people working on documentation. And monitoring can be hard, so that's also something that we can have. And we really quickly, before the end, I think I do, do have a quite some time just to show you what we built. So we are using Backstage as an internal developer platform, and we built some kind of small AI part inside to try to read all documentation, accessing information from a GitHub repository, getting also from some logs, and trying to have this kind of AI a bit more intelligent for people to be able to work. So let's say I'm an engineer and I work on a project that need to send an email. Let's say, how can I send an email? And that's really the main point. How can I do that? Uh, when I'm someone I don't know that. Is there a way? Seems like <clears throat> we do have an API, an API where you can have an endpoint that do a post request to a post on a slash email endpoint. And we have some specific schema, some specific information. Uh, it may give you some example depending on the documentation of the API. And we are pulling this kind of information part of our API governance repository with open API spec. But let's say, okay, I'm aware of that. Can I use something else? So um, do we have standards about security and tagging uh, cloud resources? That can be an interesting question for people. And you don't want to go through multiple documentation, people may not be aware. So here we have an answer, or at least partial, partial answer, with um, there is a documentation for creating new components, including a section on adding tag, trying to have a searchability, categorization, and that's the main idea, trying to provide this kind of setup. The same way we can ask other questions about uh, maybe specific people who are the admin uh, part of the project or part of the organization and who should be contacted on specific use case. Uh, do we have any core feature shared across all cloud accounts? Let's so, say something like that. And we'll see, okay, so seems like we do have a foundation set up for a AWS account. It's a library, it's in production, it's part of a specific system. At least, maybe if it's not perfect, it gives information to people that, hey, maybe you should be finding those specific owner and trying to discuss it with them with specific feature. And you don't need to build a new chat GPT, you just need to provide some core feature. And that's, I think, really important. So, thanks a lot. It's all, I think I'm just on time, maybe a bit over time. But feel free to read my article, what I'm writing about, or just to ping me on social media. So thank you. Have a good day.